In this video, I'm going to speak about HSRP tracking. So what is HSRP tracking and what does it do? So let's go with the HSRP itself. We configure the HSRP, let's say, on router 1 and router 2 for one of the groups. Router 1 was the active one, router 2 is the standby one. This means that if router 1 doesn't properly work or one of these interfaces go down, router 2 is going to take over the role that's going to become active. And when router 1 comes back, if preemption is enabled and the priority is higher than router 2, router 1 is going to take it back. But before doing anything, what I'm going to ask you is to click on that subscribe button. Also, there is a bell button there. If you click on that and activate that, anytime that I post a new video, you are going to receive it as soon as possible. Give me a thumbs up too. That's going to encourage me to create more of these kind of videos for you. Uh, once again, if problem happens here. And most of the time, problem doesn't happen here. As a matter of fact, problem happens here, right? The problem is when problem happens here, Rather one is not going to fail. Rather one is going to see itself as working just properly and it is going to continue working and the problem starts from there. So what should I do here? I would say if something happens on the internet side for rather one, rather one should decrease its priority so that it goes below the priority of router 2. Now it can happen over time or it can happen in just one go. And if it goes down, it goes below the priority of router 2, router 2 is going to preempt and become the active router. Router 1 is working, but it is not, you know, doing its functions properly, not because of itself, because there is a problem on the other side that we have no control over them. How can I do that? I can do it using IPSLA. That is because SLA is going to track a lot of different things and I'm going to enable those tracking here. So let's go to router 1 first of all. On router 1 I'm going to show IP route and it says that this route 50, 50, you know, 50, 50, 1, 0, this is the route that is connected to my ISP. And I have learned this through EIGRP, right? Of course, this is connected to me as well. Now, what I'm talking about is this. Let's say that when ISP site has a problem, this link is going to go down. This is one way, of course, to say that. I can just go for some other routes and check them. But this is the one which I'm going to can, uh, you know, check it. And I said that in case that my ISP goes down, I need to you know, give the role to another router which is connected to another ISP and that is going to act, uh, you know, on behalf of me and the computers in my network are, are not going to experience any problem. So let's go to router 1 and first of all configure IPSLA. I'm going to configure IPSLA and let's say that one number is going to be chosen here. You can see that the number is pretty big. So let's say that I'm going to start from number 1. Now that I have started from number one, I can say what I am trying to check. Let's say that I'm going to ping 5051 something, which I don't know what it is, but I'm going to you know, check this and, and see if it is working. And if it is not, then I would say that there is a problem here. Let's go to ISP and see what the IP address of ISP is in my case. If I open ISP router here, here it is, show IP interface brief, the IP address is 5051 so I'm going to ping this one to make sure that there is no problem. So how can I ping it? Using ICMP echo I can do it, so I just go to ICMP echo and it says that what is the IP address, so that's 5051100. I'm going to ping this from time to time and see if there is any problem. I can of course choose a source interface, but that's okay. Now that I am doing this, I can say how often I'm going to do this. I'm going to choose a frequency of, let's say, every 5 seconds. I can reduce this or I can increase this based on uh, the availability or the importance of this route for me. Let's say that this, thing, this, this is the actual ISP and I cannot really tolerate this much of a you know, downtime. I'm going to say every second I'm going to ping and if something happens in that second I'm going to just give the role to other router. So let's say that frequency is 5 seconds, that's okay for me. 
and then that is the configuration of the IP SLA. Now I need to exit and I need to say that this IP SLA should start working right now. So for that I just type IP SLA schedule. And in IP SLA schedule I should assign this a number. Let's say that's the same as the number that I have given to the SLA. Of course you do not really need to, you know, match these numbers. I'm just matching them because this is easier for me to remember. And then it says that how long will it work? The life is going to be forever. And when should it start? I'm going to start it from right now. Now that this is working, I can check it. Show IP SLA 1 and do show IP SLA incomplete statistics. Now it says that so far I have sent four pings, all of them succeeded, none of them failed and it is going to work forever. Okay, now I'm going to use a track to check this SLA. A track object is going to be created again, track has a number, let's say number one, and then it says what are you tracking? I'm tracking an IP SLA and IP SLA one in particular. So I hit enter and this track is now starting to work. Now that I have done this, let's go back to the interface that I had before, interface is zero, zero, and uh, not of course this one, I wanted to check the running configuration of that. And here, you see that I have configured standby one, standby two, standby one is going to be active on this router, so what I'm going to say is this, interface eternal zero, 00 for standby 1, I'm going to have tracking enabled. So I'm going to say track number 1, which I just created, is going to be this. And in case this track reports me a problem, I'm going to say that, let's say the priority is going to decrement by 30 because the priority that I have set on this is 120 on the other side the priority is 100 which is the default so if I decrement it by 30 the priority is going to decrease to 90 the other side is going to preempt the role from this right so decrementation is done here and now the tracking should start working okay now that I have done this let's say that on here this interface is going to go down on the ISP side. Let's go to ISP and I'm going to shut down Ethernet 00. Interface Ethernet 00 goes down. Now that Ethernet 00 goes down, rather 1 is going to understand what the problem is, rather 2 should take over. You see that it says that now I am from active to speaking and router 2 has become active for that. Although it wasn't on my side, by based, but based on the SLA, I could understand it again. Do show IP SLA statistics. It says that I have some failures here, and this failure is continuing to be more and more. Every 5 seconds it's going to increment. Now, let's say that now ISP is going to go back. Now before doing this, let's go to router 1 and show standby 1 and see what happens. Do show standby. Okay, show standby says that for group 1 now the priority is 90. The configured one was 120. Why? Because the track object is down and it has decremented 30. Now, if I go back to the ISP and say, now the link is OK, go back to router 1, see what happens here. Is router 1 going to take back its role or not? Show IPSLA statistics says that now it is working just fine. You see that the standby now has taken its role back. So this is how the track object works for HSRP and how we can understand there is a problem on the other side and we need to, you know, take an action and, and do something here with HSRP.